So the reason that parents are saying, why is my child completely addicted to computer games? Um, it's like if, if you've got a child on the spectrum, a child with autism, and, and you're having daily computer game arguments, you know, and my child won't leave their room. My child's spending their whole time playing tech and not interacting with the world. You know, I'm worried for my child. It's like, okay, let's pull back a bit as parents. Let's have a think about this. Why? Okay. Well, first up, your child's got home from school or wherever that they've been where they're actually very emotionally depleted. They're emotionally exhausted from coping with the day to day. Okay. So, um, if, if you've got, you know, the next door neighbor's son might not have this issue, but your, your child on the spectrum does. So they're coming home. They're exhausted. They want to escape the world. Computer games are an easy escape. Why do they need to escape? Because the whole time they're at school, they were performing. They were trying to fit into a neurotypical world. And that's a hard thing to do when you don't understand all the social rules and where it's loud and bright and all these like overstimulating environments and that sense of failure that often kids carry because they're always being told how wrong they are you know um by you know some, not every teacher's as switched on as they could be so it's been a hard day they get home they're not going to sit down at the kitchen table with you and have a coffee with you and tell you about their day that's not going to happen as you know so they're going to want to recharge a bit or as um as say your child psych would say they, they need time to regulate or emotionally regulate and that is to just get back in a good headspace and that's no different from where, where you or i as as parents sometimes we just need some time away from our kids just just 10 minutes of me time to recharge it's just that your child needs more than 10 minutes okay because they've got the, the, they're just at such a high heightened point and it, people say oh you know they get home and they go from zero to 100 in 10 seconds no they were already at 90, okay? You want them to come down to 60 if if you're lucky because it's been that sort of day. So why are they escaping to computer games? That's why. They need that time to to self-regulate, to to just reset a bit. Is it going to happen in 15 minutes? No, it's not. That That's going to be a one-hour job, okay? It, it might not be computer games. Some of us have got, say, I hear a lot from um, people, say, teenage daughters, they'll pull away and just sit on social media. Like, it doesn't matter what the medium is. They're pulling away from the world to to regenerate themselves, to emotionally regulate, to reset a bit, so they can they can face whatever's ahead of them that night. So, attacking the computer games head on is not going to work. Okay, like we've got to understand the why, and then we've got to go. You know what? The computer games are a tool. Okay, what's not a tool is playing violent, nasty computer games where we're taking on an evil persona in a game, like. It's normal that our kids want to play shoot 'em ups or whatever. That's that's there's nothing wrong with that. But you don't want our child taking on a negative persona of basically a villain, which is what some games are. Um, the perfect games are the ones that, that your child's played a lot of times. They know it's coming up. It's sort of repetitive. It lets them reset a bit. But you know, any game is still time away. Okay, where they can just zone out from their other responsibilities in the world. So to really harness this. Um, you want to have it that your child walks in the door, there's a set routine, your child maybe does one task of, you know, put their lunchbox on the bench and then they go to their room and they have that time. No worries. I don't see, see that as a bad thing. How can that be a bad thing? But but then an hour later, you've got a, a healthier, more switched on, more vibrant son or daughter. Um, the thing is though, um, you, you want to have a time limit that's preset. You don't want to be announcing to your child, hey, it's time to stop because you and I know that's argument central, just waiting to happen. Instead, you want the routine to be, all right, you walk in, you put your lunchbox on the kitchen counter. Do they really need to do it then? Surely surely they could do it later. But if you want to have the routine like that, you can. And then they go to their room for a set period of time. And the routine needs to be they set an alarm and you set an alarm. So your alarm goes off if they haven't obeyed their own alarm, but it's their job to set their alarm. It's their job to get off. And then you've got the, the age old question, of, but mom, I'm halfway through a level. I can't stop. No worries. As of tomorrow, the alarm goes off at 55 minutes, not 60, and you're off at 55, or when that game finishes before 60. Solved. We don't need to have deep discussions about it. We never want to be going head on with our child when they're in an emotionally heightened state, which let's be honest, they are. You know, you knew that when you, as soon as they got in the car, you're like, oh, this is a really, this is, this is quite a day that we're going to have this afternoon. Right. Let's, let's, let's pace ourselves for this. Um, you know that feeling, right? So, so let's let's not go head to head. Let's not have you be the bad guy. Let's have the alarm be the bad guy. Okay. And if they don't, if they don't do what the alarm says today, that's that's fine. Okay. 
um, then we can address that. And potentially it could be, oh, okay, you went over by 10 minutes today. That's 10 minutes tomorrow you don't have. And then we have to enforce it. We've got a whole new discussion tomorrow to look forward to. But either way, getting back to it. Why is my child hiding in computer games? Because they they need a space to emotionally regulate. That's actually a pretty healthy space for them to emotionally regulate. We'd rather see them jumping on the trampoline or or walking the dog or something physical. That'd be way better. But this is still helpful. Okay. Maybe over time we can move the routine to, you know, you get home, you have your your hour of tech time, and then you go and do something physical for 10 minutes. Okay. And by doing that, then you've earned the privilege of tomorrow being able to have the same routine. Because remember, computer games are not a right. They're a privilege. They're an earned privilege, okay? Oxygen's a right. Water's a right, okay? Food is a right. Computer game time, that's not a right. That's an earned privilege, okay? So we build the routine like that. So I guess I just wanted to make this video because I know how much pain it, it, it the parents are experiencing with their kids over the issue of computer games. We, we want to make it a tool. We want to make it something that um, that helps us, that doesn't doesn't make it hard for us. Um, and just being real with, as real with you as we can be, we actually run Minecraft little mini groups of kids playing Minecraft building together. And we do that, do that twice a week. And it helps our kids to get a chance to actually network with others and do teamwork in an environment that's safe. You know, they're not they're not surrounded by predators, okay, or, or people who don't care. That they're, they're, We've got our leaders, our tech people. We've got our, and these are like leaders who run things like secret agent society or peers, um, both evidence based programs. Um, like the, we're helping them, and and those kids thrive. But guess what? They don't thrive every time. Sometimes they have really hard days. Sometimes they don't want to work together. Sometimes they don't like that someone built their house right beside mine and I want them to move their house away. We have we have the challenges that you can imagine we'd have. But that's an example of using tech time well and in a healthy way. We, we're not promoting something that we don't do ourselves. Um, if you want information on that, get in touch with us. But I guess what I'm saying is it's an example of a calm game. Minecraft, for example, in the way we, we run it, it's a calm game. It's a building game. It's a working with others game. That's better than being a villain, okay? It's better than being a character that's a negative character in a computer game. So yeah, just want to encourage you guys. Yes, the arguments happen. Yes, they're going to keep happening. You get to to preset the boundaries and the routine. Don't try and preset the boundaries and routine for today. You've already lost that battle. Preset the boundaries and routine that starts next Monday, okay? Or in four days' time from now. Kids, your child's way more likely to negotiate that later. Also, put it in writing. Here's the new routine, okay? And at the end of each day, they tick it off. You know, that's the agreement we made. You get that time, but you need to do this and, and make sure that, you know, you're getting off at the right time and and that you're, you're doing it with a positive attitude and you're playing games that are healthy or at least not negative, you know? If you're going to be play a shoot 'em up be an army man because an army man's there to protect people, not, you know, a thief or a villain or grand theft auto sort of world okay guys um parents one more thing is you're doing a good job you're doing a good job i know you feel like you're not doing a good job we all feel that parent guilt oh if i was a better parent my child would, wouldn't be on computer games it's like well no i don't feel it that way my child's self-regulating there's worse things they could be doing they're in a in a safe contained space and they're going to come out better for it at the end of an hour as long as they play the right games okay so you're doing a good job mom you're doing a good job dad hang in there